Brito's strength is in schematic rendering. This gives his illustrations a clarity, simplicity, and a hermetic feel that makes his, in some ways, the most convincingly mystical of the illustrations. At bottom, Dante and Beatrice, clearly indicated by their initials, are in the earthly paradise, signaled by the tree, on the plateau top of Mount Purgatory, which stands on an island which Dante placed about where New Zealand is. It is springtime, the sun rises in the sign of the ram. Bretto shows us the zodiac and the fixed stars, which are nearly the limit of material existence, beyond all the planetary spheres. Once we know what we're looking at, we appreciate the extreme condensation of space and how it gives this image a giddy, precipitous perspective. In the midst of this impossibly steep upward view, Dante and Beatrice ascend through the sphere of fire. The four elements naturally take their place at the center of the physical universe, in order of their heaviness. Earth at center, upon it the seas, followed by the atmosphere, and then the element of fire, the lightest of all, which comes between our world and the first of the celestial spheres, that of the moon. In Canto II, we enter the heaven of the moon, which Brito has distinguished by a barely perceptible luna inscribed at the top of the sphere. Here, Beatrice instructs Dante on various astronomical questions. Her eagle eye and monitory raised finger, beside Dante's abashed look, make it clear she speaks with the authority of divine wisdom, of which she is the avatar. There is an identical image in Canto IV, when Beatrice sets Dante straight on the subject of religious vows and free will. Likewise in Canto Seven, where Beatrice instructs Dante regarding God's justice. This is not laziness on Brito's part, nor is it Velutello, who commissioned the work, economizing. Rather, it is a logical consequence of Brito's abstraction and architectonic, that is, his systematic exposition of the central concepts, having made a satisfactory formulation for the motif of Beatrice's instruction, there is no reason to alter it. The result is an almost mathematical style of illustration which makes up in suggestively cryptic precision what it lacks in variety. The moon is the heaven of those who strove for holiness but were unequal to its demands. Dante speaks here with Picarda, the sister of his friend Forese, and sees the soul of Constance, mother of Frederick II, nuns who are taken from their cloisters and forced into political marriages. These are indicated by a P and a C, as Dante and Beatrice by D and B. The aristocratic ladies are rendered in elegant dress, and their company shown in profile on an immaterial plane conveys Dante's face-to-face -face meeting the identity of the group as a well-defined class of souls, and incidentally, the very non-Euclidean geometry of heaven. In Canto V, we enter the sphere of Mercury, the heaven of those who live for honor, and meet the soul of the emperor Justinian, who codified Roman law. He gives the lead to the Roman people, so labeled. The spiky radiance of the planet gives more an impression of power than of light. In Canto VIII, we are in the sphere of Venus, the heaven of those who loved greatly. Dante meets Charles Martel, a non-entity related to the French royal house, who made it into Paradiso to bolster Dante's appeal for patronage from his daughter Clemenza, wife of the King of France. In his illustrious entourage stands Cunizza, sister to Ezzelino da Romano, who was sort of the Vlad the Impaler of medieval Italy. Cunizza was what we called a liberated woman when I was a boy. She distinguished herself primarily by the number of her lovers. Dante took a surprisingly liberal view of sexual excess, both here and in the Terrace of the Lustful in Purgatory, where homosexuals are included among the saved. Still in the sphere of Venus, we continue to meet the souls of those who greatly loved, notably Rahab, the prostitute from the city of Jericho who saved Joshua's spies, and Falco of Marseille, 
a troubadour love poet turned bishop. Here in Canto 10, we have entered the sphere of the sun, the heaven of the wise. Dante faces Thomas Aquinas, distinguished by his halo, who presents his fellows in this circle of souls. The figure in the turban is meant for King Solomon, but the rest of the characters cannot be securely tied to those mentioned in the poem, which has only two bishops, Peter Lombard of Paris and Isidore of Seville, while the illustration has four mitred figures. Brito has represented the figures with a symbolic range of hats and robes to suggest their high holiness and their representation of many times and places. Placed at the head of Canto 11, this illustration suggests the content of Cantos 11 through 14, that is, the entire itinerary through the sphere of the sun. Here the poem recounts the lives of Saints Dominic and Francis. In the illustration, we have at center the same image we have in Canto 10, Dante and Beatrice in a circle, including Thomas Aquinas and King Solomon. Surrounding them are monks, to suggest Dante's general praise of the great monastic orders, and the ring of angels surrounding them indicates the high holiness of the company. In the poem, all the souls are described as spheres of light. Giving them human form in the illustration, Brito showed their exalted nature by adjacent angels. Mm -hmm.